Let me give you a juicy part of history. Enoch was Noah's great-grandfather and Adam's great-great-great-great-grandson who led a virtuous and faithful life to the Lord. He also becomes the father of Methuselah, the guy who lived the longest. He has had several offspring during the three-plus millennia on Earth. The Book of Enoch is an ancient Hebrew apocalyptic religious literature attributed to Enoch. Enoch offers unique information on the origins of demons and Nephilim why some angels fell from heaven, why the Genesis flood was morally essential, and a prophetic exposition of the Messiah's thousand-year reign. The older elements of the text are thought to date from 300 to 200 BC, while the most modern component, Book of Parables, is thought to be from 100 BC. The Book of Enoch was discovered in Ethiopia by a Scottish explorer named James Bruce in 1773. Enoch was one of the first men to be taken to heaven so he could see what the future held for the world and its people. He witnessed the terrible judgment that would befall the fallen angels and their offspring. Enoch warned the world of the coming flood, but few believed him. The book of Enoch was written for our time. It exposes the lies of false teachers and false prophets who teach that there is no judgment, no hell, and no need for repentance. It reveals the truth about the fallen angels and their evil plans for the world. The Book of Enoch is not a fairy tale. It is a warning from God to his people. It is a call to repentance and a call to arms. Enoch is an important figure in religious history because he is one of the few people who was said to have been taken up into heaven without dying. This event is described in the Book of Genesis, and it is said that Enoch lived a life of righteousness and was favored by God. Enoch's story is significant because it shows that there is life after death and that those who live a life of righteousness will be rewarded. This story provides hope and comfort to believers, and it is a reminder that God is always watching over us. Banning from Bible The Book of Enoch is a fascinating book, but one that has been largely neglected by Christians. Why? Because it was banned by the church. In fact, the Book of Enoch was banned by the church in the 2nd and 3rd centuries, and its existence was forgotten. The book was denounced, banned, cursed, and, last but not least, lost for one and a half thousand years. The Book of Enoch was banned from the Bible because it was considered to be a heretical work. The book promotes a number of ideas that are at odds with mainstream Christianity, including the idea that there are fallen angels who live on Earth and take human wives. Even if it was banned by the Christian church, it continued to be revered by many people. In the Middle Ages, it was even included in some versions of the Bible. Today, scholars are still trying to piece together the history of the book and its many mysteries, and has been the subject of much scholarly debate. And it is one of the oldest surviving religious texts. It was widely known and quoted in the early church. Some believe that it is a Gnostic work, while others see it as a Christian text. After its rediscovery, it has since become an important part of the religious canon. It is studied by scholars and religious leaders all over the world, and its mysteries continue to fascinate and intrigue. Watchers The Watchers, according to the Book of Enoch, were fallen angelic creatures who were both the sons of God and the sons of heaven and were entrusted to watch over humans. It is understood that the women's beauty on Earth was so stunning that it drew the attention of watchers. This beauty compelled the watchers to leave their function as human watchers and become consorts to the ladies of Earth. The watchers talked among themselves and decided to take the women for themselves, impregnating them with their seed, thereby going against the stated purpose of monitoring and actively meddling with mankind's life. The leader of these angels? Samjaza informs the onlookers that they should reconsider their decision and that he will suffer for such a crime against God. However, the other angels wear him down and convince him that they will face the penalty collectively and that they will each assume responsibility for any consequences. Watchers taught women wizardry, incantations, and the division of roots and trees. They revealed information about the heavens and life itself that God did not intend for man to know, and therefore the Watchers not only betrayed God by copulating with his creations, but also corrupted them with knowledge that was not intended for them. Nephilim After mating with the Earth's women, the Watchers produced the Nephilim, a 
hybrid of angel and human. There is some controversy about what the Nephilim are, but Genesis tells us that they were on the earth in those days and later when the sons of God, or the Watchers, went to the females of mortals and had offspring with them. The Nephilim are frequently referred to as ancient heroes and men of renown. However, according to Enoch, the progeny of the women were known as giants, and these giants proceeded to consume everything that man had made. The giants, or Nephilim, then started killing men, and when they got weary of that, they started killing each other. Forbidden Knowledge During this chaotic time, an entity known as Azazel, who was thought to be a watcher, teaches men the use of swords, knives, and warfare, just as the Watchers taught him the mysteries of heaven, incarnations, and sorcery. Azazel also teaches mankind how to utilize paint, stones, and colors to modify and transform the universe. Azazel's actions increased in piety, fornication increased, and these crimes perverted all of man's ways. The other Watchers taught humans astrology, science, and astronomy, and that men were killed by their presence, and their cries reached the heights of heaven. Archangels Gabriel and others looked down from heaven and saw what was happening on earth. They went before God and blamed Azazel for the majority of problems. They also accused Simjaza for teaching mortal sorcery, and then he and his watchers mated with the women, resulting in ungodly giants. They asked God for what he wants them to do to bring the planet back to life. Flood God then sends Uriel to find Noah, the son of Lamech, and tells him to hide himself, to explain to him what is about to happen, and that the entire earth would drown in a flood, and everything that has come to be destroyed. He instructs Uriel to tell Noah how to escape the deluge, and how his seed will dwell on the world forever. God commands Archangel Raphael to bind Azazel's hands and feet and hurl him into the desert by opening the desert. He instructs Raphael to toss pointed stones at him and cover him in darkness so Azazel can dwell there eternally, bereft of all light. On the great day of judgment, God assigns Raphael the responsibility of tossing Azazel into the fire. God commands Archangel Gabriel to turn the Nephilim, giants, and descendants of the Watchers against one another. He plans for them to be slaughtered one by one. God finally sends Archangel Michael to meet the Watchers' leader, Samjaza, and warn him that he and his associates who had fornicated with the women are contaminated, and their sons, whether heavenly sons or mortal sons, will be murdered before their eyes for 70 generations. They will be sent to the deeper levels of hell, where they will face fire and be imprisoned forever after seeing the butchering of their offspring. Punishment The Watchers hired Enoch and referred to him as Enoch the Scribes. God urges Enoch to tell the Watchers that they will never be at peace because of what they have done. By having Enoch tell them their fate, the Watchers demonstrate that they are no longer above men in God's eyes, because they are being told their doom by a man putting them on the same level, if not above them. It's probable that, while Samjaza only wanted to fornicate with women and impart some heaven secrets, he didn't share Azazel's malice in teaching men how to fight. Azazel does not appear to be interested in mortal women, but rather in educating man about swords, knives, and modifying the universe, which was already perfectly formed as God intended. As a punishment, the Watchers were confined to Earth for the duration of its existence, never tasting peace. The fate of the Watchers, however, does not feel complete. We understand that they were confined for 70 generations under the Earth and will remain there until the Day of Judgment, when they will be hurled into the deepest depths to be consumed by fire. According to this logic, some think that the Watchers are still underground imprisoned at the bottom of the earth, ready to be flung into the fire of the end times. The Book of Enoch teases us with the idea of angels fighting angels and demonstrates the power of evil, demonstrating that it may corrupt even those created from goodness. Despite being thousands of years old, the story is rife with themes of treachery, morality, desire, and ambition. It contributes to a more complete understanding of how sin cleansed the world. It also introduces us to some more intriguing and meaningful individuals, such as Sam Jaza, the leader of the Watchers, who knew his role and meant to fulfill it, only to fall to peer pressure and surrender. It also explains why God may have destroyed the Earth with the Flood, 
in order to rid the planet of the Nephilim and cleanse the soil that had been contaminated by the Watchers. Well, that pretty much wraps up this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Let us know your opinion in the comments below. Oh, and make sure to subscribe to this channel with the bell notification on if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some pretty awesome stuff here, which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.